What's going on, everybody? Uh, first ever episode of Puck Wave Podcast. What better time than the trade deadline, right? Yeah, absolutely, and crazy one at that. So today we got Jacob Lucas with me. We got the goalie, Jackson Bowline, here also. Jacob, I guess let's start with your neck of the woods. New York Rangers okay. seems like they wanted anybody that they could get their hands on, and that's what they did. Yeah, um, they made some great moves. Um, basically, every one of those moves, except for Braun, because obviously he's a defenseman, adds some bottom six depth for us, which is you know, something that we improved coming into this season, but something that we still desperately needed. So I liked every deal. Um, Cop was a little more expensive than I thought he was going to be, but overall, I don't think it was a, I don't think it was like blundered or anything. I think we gave up some fine assets for a pretty good player, and I'm happy with where this takes us. Add some depth, some experience, some grit going into the playoffs. I think, I think my favorite move, and this is a perfect segue to Jackson, Flower going to Minnesota. What yeah. a just a home run yeah. deal all around. Yeah, exciting uh, for sure. It sounds like they talked him down to a uh, conditional second round pick, but that first round would take us if we get to uh, a couple of rounds, but that would be the fur- farthest the Wild have gone since I think 2009. Um, I haven't, I haven't officially looked that up, but it, it's been a long time since the Wild have gotten out of the second round, um, let alone the first round. So just adds a little bit uh, more excitement in Minnesota, something they last few deadlines at least have not had um, excitement in the buying part of it. Um, a lot of, tr- a lot of uh, selling, uh, but yeah, not a whole lot of big time buying like the, like this, but I like the, the Jacob Middleton uh, return from Kapokokkanen as well, though. The guy probably re- will replace Alex Goligowski on that number one pair um, just with Spurgeon, just a- adding his, defensive defenseman uh, type mentality and a toughness mentality. Um, something we got with Delorier too. So um, Jacob probably knows Jackson. Maybe if you've listened to other things I've done, I, uh, I don't really like being too serious of a guy. So that's why my favorite pickup today was Dick Rack for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Ricard Raquel, of course. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that's the only reason why he's going to really help their second line though. And that's, you know, exactly what, Malkin needed, especially if he's going to kind of be in and out of the lineup with injuries and whatnot. But I think that's a great move for Pittsburgh and that team, especially out of the East lately, they've been getting like hot at the exact right time. And who knows, Sydney and, you know, playoff time, that's when something happens. I can't say I yeah, like, I like that. Great. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, I was going to say, can't say I like the move as a Rangers fan. Like, just personal standpoint, but no, I agree. Good acquisition by Pittsburgh. They didn't forfeit too much and probably a guy they can hang on to. I don't think he'll be a one-year rental for them. So, And like yeah, a lot of the- um, he'll fit in. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. No, go for it. Well, I was just going to say, he's just a great, um, a good addition. Just add some skill to that roster a little bit. The team looking to go back uh, for a deep playoff run. I was going to say, like, a lot of the, you know, Giroux, Hampus, those all happened, Giordano yesterday. Those all happened before. And then Carolina was like, hey, we'll just get Max Domi at, like, 305, and then nobody will talk about it because it was, you know, after the official deadline ended, but they put it in. And they gave up, like, basically nothing for a guy who's going to be a, a key contributor to their playoff run. Yeah. Very complicated in terms of how that structured out with like three teams and some prospects and yeah and like money. cap had to it, go to different teams yeah that that one was a little a little weird. I don't understand it too well, but I mean I agree. Carolina did not forfeit much to get Domi, and that surprised me. I thought Columbus was going to try and get more for him in return. We'll get to yeah, trades. He, of- he hasn't had the six. Yeah. Oh no. Well, I was just gonna say he hasn't had the success um, that he saw more in his Coyote years, and uh, but yeah, I mean he's definitely a player that brings some grittiness uh, to a a Carolina team that has been good but a little inconsistent this year. Let's talk about like what I just said. Team players that went 
past few days. Obviously, the Drew one, Jacob and I hate Philadelphia, but you know, we just I want to see him like make a, a good run. I don't I don't really need the ginger to get you know a, a ring per se, but you know, I want him to go at least to the playoffs, which he will in Florida. But besides that, what move made non today was your favorite? Not today. Mark Giordano, that was yesterday, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that would be probably my favorite. The Leafs needed something. Um, I mean, this has not been a very intriguing year this for them this year. They're used to the regular season success, and they've been kind of slumping. And adding a defense with the struggling goaltending should help. Question is, does it get them out of the first round? <laughs> I have no idea. I mean, like I said, they've had the regular season success to get out of there but the last, the, the last couple of years, but – uh, they still haven't, so I don't know. Yeah, I mean, all jokes aside, um, I mean, it's it's so easy. It's so easy to make jokes about that. I think that's a really good pick. Um, I, again, being a Rangers fan, like tough to say this. Um, for Boston, I really, I really like the Ambassador in home trade. I think that he's a good player. Um, got a pretty hefty contract. I mean, eight years is a little longer than I would have done him for. I probably would have put him for like five or six years, but you know, good signing by them. Definitely a good defenseman heading into the playoffs. That is <clears throat> really going to boost their blue line. I think that was, that was the biggest key for them to re-sign him right away. That just yeah. made the deal even that much better for them. Yeah. And then with the Jake DeBrusque extension, I was sure DeBrusque was going to go at the deadline especially after Lindholm, and then he's sticking around. Yeah, it sounds like it's going to be like a, tr- a sign-in trade this offseason um, by the sound of it. I mean, I think his, his trade request is still there so from what I've read. Yeah, at this point, he just has to hope that like they win a cup or something, right? And then he'll be like, all right, yeah. can I yeah. leave now? <laughs> yeah. I but mean, yeah, I think but- that's – I was just going to say waking up this morning and seeing that like he signed the extension. I was like, Oh yeah. Then that team will definitely, you know, want to take that on, but I guess not. Yeah. Yeah. What about what was the move? It could have been done, you know, past few days today that you two are just like, why, why would they do that? I mean, the return is big. But for me, it's kind of the Hagel trade. I mean, don't get me wrong. Chicago gets two first rounders and two good prospects. However, Hagel was like one of the few young bright spots Chicago had. And I was, I mixed on it because you get a good return that will like help you, help you develop in the future. But at the same time, you have a young guy who's doing good, could help foster other young talent. That to me was just a little bit, don't, don't, didn't completely, I, Half understand it, half don't. Overall, don't love it. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, it's just kind of a weird situation. He's kind of came out of nowhere. Uh, last year had a really good season, and then this year just continued it. Um, you just got to think, is it because of the success, like playing with some really good players uh, with Chicago on that line? But I don't know. He, he seems like a great player. Every time I've watched him, he's just he's a quick, uh, smart hockey player. And yeah, I mean, they got a hefty return for him. That's for sure. Definitely. I don't, I I mean, this doesn't add to, you know, a trade I don't like, but I don't know how Tampa Bay keeps doing this. Like I understand picks in sports, especially if you're going to be in the playoffs and like the lightning making very deep runs, first round picks are like relevant to you, but just like one day they're going to look back and be like, wow, you know, maybe we should have had a first round pick, you know, not for, or not traded five straight first round picks or whatever, but I mean, it's working for them. So I guess, you know, I can't really uh, knock it yet. When's their next one? 25. Yeah. Cause they or traded is- this year's is gone probably. And then the next two. So yeah. Yeah. There you go. They'll, they'll probably yeah. trade that for like Patrick Kane next year and be like, wow, they only got a first for him. And like, you know, cycle <laughs> over Pete. Uh, yeah. Did you yeah. see Colorado poke a little fun at Tampa Bay on Twitter? What'd they do? They said, like, uh, Colorado tweeted something to the effect of, like, don't worry, we're within the cap, not using LTIR. 
yeah that that whole we could talk about that for hours but uh that could be a whole episode yeah obviously i'm gonna keep it close to home on this one why didn't the devils do anything the devil's social media team yeah. all day was like, oh, you know, we don't control the tape, blah, blah, blah. And then they're like, hey, we got the Hamburglar. It's like that. You can't have it both ways. <laughs> like that doesn't satisfy my need for anything. The devil's had like four players that they could have gotten like a good return for. And they just did nothing. Like, even OK, I'm just going to use PK Subban as a good example, because a lot of players had big contracts and, you know, teams had to eat it. So what? You eat four and a half for the rest of the year. He's just going to leave in two months and then you get nothing for him. I'm sure a team would have given like a third or a fourth at least for him. Zaka too. Yeah. Andreas Johansson. But hey, we got the Hamburglar. That's great. Now we have like 15 active goalies, which is, you know, awesome. If we just have a, a horrible track record, I was talking to one of my friends about it with backup goalies like Corey Crawford. We literally ruined his life. Uh, Jonathan Bernier like has a messed up hip potentially for life. I just I don't get it. That was one of the one of the most surprising deals that didn't go through at the deadline was Subin. I mean, you, you covered all the points. It just it doesn't make sense from the devil standpoint. Like you could have gotten something for him. I, I don't see how a team doesn't give you a third round minimum. Yeah, yeah, he he definitely still adds some something from the point, like a, some offensive skill from the point, uh, whether it's on the second line or even on the third line. Um, like a team, I can't think of anything right now, but a team that needs a better third line defensive crew, Subban would definitely improve that. I, I don't know, he wouldn't be. You'd probably get a decent deal from him, I would think. Yeah. You mean to tell me that the Blues were like, oh, we can have P.K. Subban or, you know, let's get Nick Letty instead. Like, come on. I, that, ugh. But, you know, it's fine. Yeah. We'll just another lottery pick and we'll go from there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, speaking of players who didn't get dealt, Arizona, hold on to Castle and Shkren. I I was surprised that neither of them went. I would have figured we'd at least get one going somewhere. I mean, I don't think Arizona's going to hold on to Shikran for long, which probably a mistake. You know, great player, young, could be one of the cornerstones of rebuilding the franchise. But Castle, how do you not deal him? That that also made no sense. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they just thought they were getting more than they were getting offers for or, or what, because I know there was team int- – or there was reportedly – team interested teams interested um so i don't know how if they were just too greedy or not but i mean they made a decent trade maybe a little overpaid for the, with the wild um for the rights for jack mcbain uh, he's still in college but he was a third round pick a couple years ago had a really good year this year um but a second round pick for someone who's never played in the nhl for a team rebuilding is is pretty risky but that's really the only move they made yeah. Not to get a topic, over or under Phil Kessel in his career making ninety million dollars. How, how much has he made so far? I was shocked. This says ninety seven million six hundred thousand. Oh Holy wait, God. you were ask oh you were yeah, asking like yeah. right now <laughs> over under. Oh, I would have said under. I thought it was like a question like by his, the time his career ends, will he be over under? Because he is, this is the last year of his eight year, $64 million contract. I understand so much of the saying a lot of money, but somebody would have taken the hot dog, man. Somebody would have. I, I refuse to believe. I didn't that even they know would've. his contract was that much. Oh, I'm sure he thinks about it every night before he goes to bed. Like, look what I did to these people, man. <laughs> yeah. Damn. I mean, I, I didn't know that was his contract, I'll be honest. But wow, that is yeah, he's made almost a hundred million dollars. <laughs> but do you think yeah, it's pretty, yeah. Do you think that Shikrin not getting moved was because of who already got taken in the price? So do you think that somebody just didn't want to give Arizona those assets? It's yeah, possible. I mean, it was 
it was reportedly a lot. Um, wasn't it like two first round picks and prospect? Yeah, it would have been something. Uh, I mean, yeah. Um, so I just don't know if teams wanted and the year he's having, it's a little risky. He's still really young and obviously really talented, but yeah, it's, it would have been very risky giving up that much for someone. I think they could have gotten that asking price if he didn't get hurt like a week before the deadline. Oh, yeah. If he was, if That's he a good was point. 100% healthy coming into the deadline, I think someone pays two firsts and a prospect or two. But with that injury, I think it's immediately, okay, well, we'll see, we'll see come summer, but we're not doing it right now. Yeah. But he, even that, like he signed until the end of the 25 season for less than $5 million. So, you know, if you're not totally healthy and, you know, you can't play every game, oh, well. But, you know, you're getting a, a pretty good defenseman. Yeah, you'd have to give up a lot. But if you're contending, you know, you, you don't care about those picks. That's fair. Yeah. Fair point. So, I have a question for everyone. Um, do you have, like, kind of a ta- like a big takeaway coming out of things? I mean, mine is, like, I'm not saying they're not built to continue a run for like five years from now, but Colorado really going in on a Stanley Cup this year with some of those bottom six acquisitions today. They're really going in on the Cup this year. Yeah. Yeah. A, a little recent, um, I guess, uh, hometown bias, but I mean, Nico Sturm was sent there. He was, was a fan, or a, a, he was a player favorite. He was a fan favorite for all the Minnesota Wild fans. I mean, we loved him here as that fourth line center. He would. He was pretty average on the draw, um, but he was probably one of our best faceoff uh, winners. But we don't have very good faceoff takers on the Wild. But he's going to add a lot more depth on that team just defensively. He's an incredible penalty killer, um, and, and it's something Colorado definitely. I mean, the, the moves they make it showed that they knew their their bottom six was not not what it needed to be to finally get past that second round. Um, and I think they, they improved this, this trade deadline. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm thrilled with the Rangers deadline. I was bummed. I liked Lekkanen. I liked Cagliano coming into yeah. today. I was hoping we could get one of the two and then Colorado snatches both of them. I said it the other yeah. day, Le- the, the avalanche so- are selling their soul for the Stanley cup. Like right. if they don't, if they don't win, they're going to have to have a real tough conversation with, I, I guess, Satan, because they're just, it's it's literally Stanley Cup or like the ball arena is exploded. Yeah, I mean it's been a couple years now of the, they're being the favorites, like they're they're the money line favorites to to go in and be that Stanley Cup winner, and they just cannot get past uh, the second round, and they, they're pretty sick of that, I'm sure. I bet. I mean, I bet the fan base is kind of pissed at this point. You, I mean, being talked about as one of the hottest teams while still being so young, and then, yeah, if you haven't you haven't done anything with it. You know, two years where you theoretically could have beaten the Tampa Bay Lightning if it was you versus the Lightning, and you don't even make it to that stage. Yeah. So don't even make it to the Western Conference Final last year. Yeah, yeah. that's okay. COVID year doesn't count. Um, my big takeaway before, like I said, the avalanche just kept going and going. I really, really thought JB when the wild got flower, I convinced myself, I was like the Minnesota wild are going to be in the Stanley cup this year. It's, I know, you know more about it than I do, but like I even said, I go out of my way most nights to watch the Minnesota wild. You know how weird that is for somebody in New Jersey? Yeah. I mean, I don't want to watch the devils. I'm not even going to lie. But there's just something about this team, and we know the Avalanche just something about the playoff time. They just don't remember what to do. I don't know. I really think that Mark Andre Fleury is going to bring something, and this is this wild team is going to be, you know, a big threat. Yeah. Well, the one thing that the Wild last um, couple of playoff appearances, the one thing that's kept them down, whether it was Devin Dupnik or I mean, Kappa wasn't bad last year, but. I mean, they weren't like the team that they were this year, but the one thing that's kept them down is the goaltending. I mean, Devin Dupnik was horrible in playoffs uh, every year that they would go. He just wasn't unreliable. Um, I was also never a Devin Dupnik fan very much, but yeah, it's just somebody with experience, a goalie with um, the Stanley cup experience, 
playoff experience. It's something super exciting. Um, and, and like I said, the wild don't make moves like this very often. Um, Billy G really wants to, uh, get things going this year. He, he, he thinks this is a team that can do it. So it's so exciting to be a Minnesota fan. And obviously we have no success, success in Minnesota in any sport. So it, it would be, uh, the state would go crazy. I mean, Talbot and flower. That's quite the goaltending duo. I mean, I know you need to score goals and everything, but let's be honest, goaltending is what's going to win you a Stanley Cup. If you have a goaltender that can just come up huge and make the saves needed, that's, I mean, I think I'm not one of the people who say the Rangers are only in, or only in the playoffs position. I don't think You really should though. Like you, you really should look in the mirror, Jake, and be like, no, that is, that is the exact reason. No, I don't think that's true because I think Georgiev is a good goaltender. And like people are going to point to his stats and his save percentage and his goals allowed against, but no backup can really do much when they're starting one out of every 10 games, only playing in a back-to-back scenario. Like no goaltender is going to get hot like that, but I think we're fine. I think our backup is fine. I think our backup could have us maybe not in top three, but we could certainly be contending for the first wild card for sure. Um, but goaltending is what wins you a Stanley Cup. Like if the Rangers make a deep run, it's going to be because it's just circuit. I think that's true. I think the bottom six will definitely help. But I agree, the Wild with the goaltending they have now, I would not be surprised to see them make a deep run, you know, conference finals or even Stanley Cup finals. Yeah, I mean, that would be a dream come true, obviously. A, all right, let's let's totally go to the opposite. We talked about Mark Giordano before. Minnesota or Minnesota Kraken, the Seattle Kraken, just getting rid of anybody that they could, understandably so. But I do like what they did. The next three drafts, so first round, three picks, second round, eight picks, three or five in the third, and then just on and on. They're just totally what Vegas did that worked. They didn't follow for whatever reason. It's not even like it was that outdated of a model. It wasn't even an outdated model. But, you know, they got a good return for Giordano, uh, the few other players that they got rid of. I kind of wish they got rid of Tenev just because I don't like something him in Seattle. I just hate that pairing. I'm sure the fans love him, but I just hate it for some reason. Uh, but, you know, I like what they did. So they shouldn't just because, you know, they're very bad. Uh, we're not going to talk about them a lot, but I like what they did today. No, I, I, I do, too. I mean, what, it's nearly 40 draft picks in the next three years, right? And then I was just watching. Yeah, I was just watching ESPN or NHL Network. I can't remember which one it was on, but one of their like draft or uh, trade deadline day specials, they had uh, Francis on, and he said he does not plan on using every draft pick. He does not plan on making a selection. He wants to deal some of those picks for some talent. And I mean, I think that they're doing a great job of getting all the capital they need to make, you know, two or three moves, get some more experienced players, and then draft some good young prospects. Also, like a a subplot of this trade deadline was players, even as recently as last offseason, that their teams got rid of, that said team wanted them back. Giordano, of course. Marc-Andre Fleury. Just like these, these teams getting severe buyer's remorse and then they're like, hey, you know what? Why don't we bring you back? Like, if Vegas didn't get rid of Flurry, we would think so much differently of them right now. And I mean, yeah, I can't think of any other teams. I've just been seeing like so many trades and like typing so much today that it's all just it's all just mush. But was there any <laughs> other people that could have gone back to a, a former love and you know something like that today? Yeah, I was hoping for so, a uh yeah. Well, I'll go quick. I was just hoping for a Mark Giordano uh, return. I mean, he obviously went to Toronto, but I was really hoping he was going to go back to Calgary um, and hopefully go for a run, something he really didn't do with Calgary for his time um, there. But I was hoping he'd go back and and enjoy their success too this year. But The buzz died down coming in today, but it certainly wasn't non-existent. I really thought that we might see a JT Miller return to New York. And I still think that there's the chance for that to happen over the summer. I mean, we held on to a lot of our more valuable prospects and, you know, we dealt away a couple of picks, but we held, we still have some good high picks. We have some valuable prospects and I could see us making a run and trying to D 
steal Strom in a package with a couple other people and bring JT Miller back in the off season. I thought there was a chance it could happen today. Obviously not, but that certainly looked like it makes sense for the Rangers trying to bring in that star player to help a second line. Yeah. Um, JT uh, Miller was one I was surprised didn't go today. As what's that happened? Like not a lot did, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. It was a lot more kind of surprising names. Um, a lot of names that we thought were going were, went, but a lot of names that we thought for sure were going, like, I mean, like the Phil Kessels. It wasn't really any uh, flame to the fire. And it, it wasn't a lot of, like, oh, my God, I can't believe blah, blah, blah got traded. It's like, oh, wow, you know, the Avs really filled out their team. The, the Rangers got a lot of good depth. It was a lot of really practical trades, and nobody's going to, like, you know, eating cat food because they traded everything to get one guy. All right. I mean, it's, you know, favorite hypothetical. Now that the trade deadline's come and gone, we feel like we know these teams and how they're going to adapt to their new situations. So, I don't know, three months from now? Yeah, a little less. Two and a half months from now? Who's going to be playing for the Cup, boys? Everything in me wants to say Colorado. Everything in me wants to say Colorado. But they have the Rocky – historically, they have a Rocky playoff experience, and I don't know if they're going to do it. Um, I'm going to say Colorado because just on paper and the way they've been playing throughout the regular season, they're doing great. But I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, they do a traditional collapse in the playoffs and fall in the conference finals or even in the second round Um, from the East. I think it's Florida. I think Florida's coming in. I think they're going to knock off the Canes. They're going to knock off Tampa Bay. I don't think it matters who they play. I think they're going to the finals. So, yeah, that was my answer, too. I mean, I'm going to stick to my my preseason uh, predictions. I had Florida winning the Cup, and I'm going to stick with that. The only wrong thing I had was Spencer Knight winning Rookie of the Year. That is far wrong. Um, He's had a difficult rookie season, to say the least. But as long as Bobrovsky can – get them through a playoff, which he's done before. Um, I mean, he's, he was pretty good with Columbus. Uh, or he was really good with Columbus, but through playoffs, um, he had a couple great playoff runs as well. But I, I just think it's all on Bobrovsky. I mean, the, the offense is good enough. The defense is good enough. They have the star power. Florida would be my pick, too, still. All right. I don't, I don't want to what be about that you? too. I kind of want to go – not like totally different just to be different, but what I really feel in my heart. Uh, I want to say the avalanche, but I don't know. Like I said before, the Minnesota Wild, something about them. And yeah, I guess to, to boost Jackson's ego a little bit, but something about them. <laughs> and I'm not just saying it because like one of my like better friends is, is a Penguins fan, but I something about the Penguins, man. They're going to, yeah. I don't know. I can't even like articulate it. It's you watch this team. Getting Raquel, it it's something they're putting the pieces together to make a deep run. And I mean, like Florida, you can't go wrong with them either. I think this Giroux deal just helps them even more. But I mean, just the East in general, I feel like if you said one or one through eight, you wouldn't be like, oh, you're an idiot. You know, this East is just so loaded this year. 100%. I mean... Um, and after after the deadline, it's just even more disgusting than one would have thought. And I, yeah. like, I mean, not every team has a chance, but like, there's even like Detroit. I feel like could get into the second round if they made it. They're not going to, but that's just how good it's been. Yeah, I like the Penguins a lot um, too. Definitely, especially I mean, after this trade them, but they have the goalie uh, Tristan Jari to get them through. He's had a a heck of a year. And I mean, they have one of the most underrated defensemen, John Murillo. Um, Yeah. They just, they're, they're a sneaky team too. And obviously with their success, you can't count them out. Yeah. So I think we'd be remiss to do a trade deadline podcast without talking about Kevin Weeks. (laughs) This man doesn't care (laughs) where he is. He's just dropping bombs everywhere. It, yeah. The power of hockey Twitter even got it to make the ESPN trade deadline special. Bucci showed him yeah. like six or seven of the best ones. 
one of them, this dude was on Mount Everest <laughs> reporting live. <laughs> yes. And did you see that one with the garbage can? That was just, <laughs> that was yeah, hilarious. I mean, like at that point, it's like crazy how, like they even said the power of the internet, just like a couple people who like hockey and tweet about it. And then it like makes, like this dude had a trash can on literally his Christmas, <laughs> but we loved it. That's why we, you know, we love the sport. We love Kevin Weeks. But yeah, he by far stole the trade deadline. Yeah, hundred percent. I saw I saw a response to one of his one of his trade like bombs, and and it, the NHL Network social media account like even responded to it. It was a picture of some random scuba diver, and it's like Kevin Weeks during the next tweet. And <laughs> at this point, I wouldn't be surprised if this man is just on a boat somewhere. And he's like, "Well, we have another trade." <laughs> and it makes you wonder, yes. like, what's he going to do come free agency time? Like, I imagine the man wants to go on vacation. So that, that scuba thing might be a possibility. True. I'd like it. <laughs> like, like I said, a lot happened, but, you know, not a lot happened. It's just so much sports lately. So, like, my mind is just fried. Yeah, is there, is, is. is there anything we missed? Trades. Uh, I mean, there's still now. trades. There's still trades coming in. I don't think there's going to be anything major from the sounds of it, but obviously the league has to approve them. Um, but yeah, still some moves, but that's probably it for major, major news. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I don't think we're going to get any huge, I don't think we're going to get any huge moves when, when, while the league processes this because, you know, a few teams managed to keep things pretty tight under wraps. I mean, I'll be honest, the Rangers did a great job keeping most of their stuff under wraps in terms of like acquisitions. You didn't really hear it until they wanted it out. But overall, it's sports. Everyone's got a source. Things are just the big trades leaked. That's how it goes. I, I don't think we're yeah. going to hear the NHL or any team come out and say like, oh, yeah, we didn't announce this before the deadline, but just in you know, two first rounders and a prospect going here for some big name player. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I, I was totally just about to say something and I just like to- <laughs> totally forgot it. That's what happens when you watch March Madness for like four straight days and then wake up and all this is going on. Um, yeah, it's been a crazy week. Yeah. I, I don't know. I really thought I had something. Just- all the sports right now are going crazy. MLB's back with spring training. Um, some major trades happening in the NFL. Trade deadline, March. Like you said, just been a time to be a sports fan. Yeah, yeah, it's been fun. And we got the NCAA tournament coming up. I don't know how big college hockey fans you guys are, but I'm pretty excited about it. Like I, tr- no. I try to keep up with it. And, you know, I try to post about whatever yeah. I see of it, but there's just like so many teams. And so like, I, it's a lot, but you know, I try to, I try to keep up yeah. with it a little bit. I do a really bad job of keeping up with it, but I want to, uh, like, I don't really watch it if I'm being honest, but I want to check it out. Now that the tournament's rolling around, I want to make sure I catch a few games. They make it hard to keep, keep up with it. They don't televise really anything um, for college hockey. Um, unless you have subscriptions for streaming sites, but. Uh, they make it hard, that's for sure. Is there a uh, team we should be on the lookout for in the tourney? Um, well, I think Minnesota State, uh, Mankato, has – they have the probably the best goalie in the tournament, um, Dryden McKay. And then I like Quinnipiac. Um, I think they are slept on um, a lot, but obviously UMass, too, you know, defending champions. I think they get by Minnesota pretty easily. We'll, we'll see. I don't like the Gophers. I have a very big hatred for Gopher hockey, so maybe a little bias. UMass just won the Hockey East. I know that. Yeah. And I know Quinnipiac's good because Theo yeah. Backman, TSW friend, goes there, and they're apparently pretty good. I like I like Quinnipiac. I didn't even know. Like, I'm not even going to lie. I live not too far from there. I had no idea they had a hockey team before this year. <laughs> yeah, they were where they I think they got to the Frozen Four last year. Huh. Pretty sure they had a good run um last year. But but yeah. But yeah, I mean what uh we'll obviously iron it out. We'll get to get to know each other a little bit better. But uh that was episode one, TPW Pod. I don't like saying like the full name because that's just like a lot of letters and <laughs> characters. 
TPW pod, just six, boom, it's quick and easy. Uh, you know, follow us on Instagram at the puck wave. I mean, I don't know how often we're going to do these as often as humanly possible. A lot of people have a lot of different schedules, yeah. but I mean, you know, the best time of the year is coming up. And so look, look at the people, the information they need to know and, you know, stay up to date on the IG and whatnot. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you guys got anything else you want to say? No, no, no. nothing bad. All right. Looking forward to some playoff hockey. I mean, yeah. we still got still got a little bit of the regular season, but you know, we do know who's going to be there. So now it's just the formality. We just got to play. The there was a finalized trade, and I dropped my phone, but the Ducks finalized something. So yeah. All right. Well, like I said, I don't know when we'll be back, but stay tuned. Follow us on Instagram. You'll know when the next one is, and we're out. Awesome. Yeah.